Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Amelia Aldeo. I'm a Yale trained clinical psychologist and I'm also a former research professor at Ohio State. I used to be the director of a lab studying anxiety and depression. And today in Therapy Corner, I want to talk to you guys about exposure. And not necessarily about the nitty gritty of how to do a session, but actually about something way more important. How to manage our very own anxiety about doing exposure sessions with our clients. We need to feel more comfortable so that we do these sessions more frequently and we can deliver higher quality care to all of our patients. Exposure is a key component of CBT for anxiety and we know it's effective and we know it's safe. And yet, when it comes down to running an exposure session, we feel a pang of anxiety. We get uncomfortable. We want to procrastinate it. In fact, we might end up spending a lot more time on cognitive restructuring and not nearly enough on behavioral exercises. And I'll tell you, I've struggled with this myself, so have my students, so has everybody that I talk to, really. I mean, when I ask people about exposure, at the very least, they tell me they're uncomfortable, if not downright, super anxious and completely avoidant. And this is supported by data. There are many surveys of CBT therapists out there, and we know that less than 30% of them are regularly doing exposure for their anxiety patients. That's right, less than 30% of them. Now, I think this has a lot to do with our training and our training programs. We spend a lot of time focusing on techniques, focusing on treatment delivery, and not enough time on how we feel as therapists, not enough time working on different ways of regulating our very own emotions as therapists. So today, I wanna to share with you guys four tips that have worked for me really well over the years. And they've also worked for my students and my colleagues. So I hope you check them out, I hope you try them, and I hope they work for you. Let me know how it goes by leaving a comment below. And let's get started. Tip number one, set up a date for exposure. At the beginning of CBT, we do psychoeducation. We teach our clients about the CBT model, and we also tell them that we're gonna be doing two types of exercises, cognitive reframing and also exposure. But what I find to be the case is that after these initial conversations, we tend to not talk about exposure very much. We put it out of mind, and that makes it more likely that we're gonna be procrastinating, and even worse, not doing it all together. So what I recommend is that you set up a date so that you and your client agree you will begin to do exposure. And every week, you can have a check-in. So for example, today, we're six weeks away from exposure, five weeks away from exposure, and so on and so forth. This is gonna allow you to hold you guys accountable to each other, and it's also gonna make the client more comfortable with the idea of the upcoming exposure. Now, you don't need to be rigid about the date. In fact, you shouldn't be rigid at all, because things come up, right? You might realize that you need to spend more time with this client doing cognitive work, or they might face new stressors, or you might realize that they have other disorders, other conditions that weren't so evident at the beginning of treatment. Right? So by all means, please be flexible. But if you're always talking to your client about this date, about this anchor, then you can have explicit conversations about pushing back on exposure. And all these explicit conversations are gonna make it more likely that eventually, when the time is right, you will do exposure. And there's a bit of a bonus here as well. As you have these conversations with the client, Use this as an opportunity to begin brainstorming elements for the fear hierarchy. I personally find it super awkward and not efficient at all to have just one session devoted to coming up with like 10 items on the fear hierarchy, right? Items that have lots of different levels of anxiety that the client is likely to do, therefore are feasible, that I as a clinician think are useful, and so on and so forth. But if we spend every session coming up with a couple of elements that might go into the hierarchy, now we have a long list to draw from and we can be very creative. And more importantly, we can come up with different contexts to do different types of exposure. And this is very important because according to inhibitory learning theory, having more context for an exposure is likely to result in greater effectiveness. Tip number two, set up expectations. We tend to think of exposure and we talk about it to our clients as a sort of very linear process, right? The client is going to be facing progressively more anxiety provoking situations every time. We build the fear hierarchies also in a very linear fashion. But the reality is that people are far from linear. Many times, the anxiety and exposure situations may be a bit too high. And actually, even more frequently, it's not gonna be intense enough. It's not uncommon to walk out of an exposure session feeling that you didn't elicit enough anxiety in your client. The client might also feel this, and they might feel disappointed, they might feel bad about themselves, they might feel that treatment is not progressing properly. So it's really, really important to set expectations right. 
Sometimes exposure, it's not gonna give them the same amount of anxiety as they are expecting it. Okay, remember anxiety, it's all about expectations, right? So sometimes we think a situation is gonna make us really anxious and then it doesn't, right? So maybe that's not so much a failure of exposure, maybe that's a lesson to be learned about expectations and anxiety. Yeah. But nonetheless, you want to set expectations right. And what I like to do with my clients, I like to talk about exercise examples. So for example, if you go to a spin class, you get a great workout, you release a lot of endorphins and it feels great. Maybe you go the next week and it doesn't feel as good. And there's no clear reason. Maybe you're too stressed or maybe you're less stressed or maybe you didn't work out as hard or maybe your body's already habituated and you need to work even harder, right? So on average, we might say that we get a lot of enjoyment, you know, we make a lot of progress out of going to spin classes, but it's really hard to say that every single class is going to be amazing. The same applies to exposure exercises. And now as a bit of a bonus for you guys, when you do come across a situation in which it doesn't seem like you're listening enough anxiety in the client, there are two things to keep in mind. First of all, the items on the hierarchy might no longer be relevant, the order may no longer apply. So you wanna be very recursive. You want to be constantly checking in with your client about the hierarchy. And the second thing that might be going on is that they might be using safety behaviors. So you might have to be very mindful and try to counteract this type of behavior. I'll make a different video about safety behaviors later because it's a very long topic. Tip number three, seek out emotional supervision. I mentioned before how we spend a lot of time focusing on developing techniques and not enough time on developing emotion regulation skills as therapists. So talk to your supervisor and see if they're willing to give you a few minutes each session so that you can talk about the feelings you're having about exposure. And if your supervisor is not the right person for whatever reason, don't worry, there's plenty of other people you can talk to. There's probably older students in your program who also have done exposure, there's probably professors who've done it as well, and there's also a broader network of people that you can reach out you know, the community of clinical psychologists and of anxiety experts. And even if you're a professional, you might still struggle with doing exposure exercises. We know that less than 30% of CBT therapists out there are actually doing this on a consistent basis. So what I recommend here is peer supervision. I'm sure there is somebody in your clinic, your neighborhood, or your network who's done exposure treatment before. So reach out to them and ask them if they're willing to give you peer supervision. You can offer them peer supervision in return, or maybe supervision for one of their students. So give this a shot. Number four, self-care. This should have been number one probably because it's so important and certainly something that we don't talk about enough. So what I would say is on the days that you do exposure, try to set up some time to decompress, to relax, to process your emotions. Now I'm not saying go get a two hour massage and a very long bubble bath because you might not have the time, the money, or quite frankly the interest in doing that. But find things that give you joy, find things that allow you to decompress in the middle of the day. They could be small things. For example, go to your favorite bakery and buy a treat. Or go for a walk listening to your favorite music, maybe for like 10 minutes. Or do a quick mindfulness exercise. Or, I don't know, at the end of the day, go home and get a glass of wine. Whatever works for you. But definitely make sure that you're setting up that time for yourself. So these are my tips for how to get more comfortable with exposure. I hope you guys try them and I hope you like them and I hope they work. So let me know how it goes by leaving a comment below. If you have other tips, suggestions or comments, also let me know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and also to share with people in your network. Friends, classmates, professors, students, anyone who's interested in these topics. You can do so in a number of ways. You can share links to the video or you can share my posts on social media. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.